Hello everybody, and welcome back to Space Engine. Ooh, where the hell am I? Oh, I'm still here. Oh, Jupiter. Actually, this is a perfect place to be, because I have a topic to talk about that, uh, well, mostly it's because people keep badgering me about it, uh, especially my moon video, so yeah, I guess you can see where this is going. But it's the, basically the physics of radiation belts. Because people seem to have this weird obsession with, actually, I'm trying to find Europa, uh, wrong one. Uh, I really need to learn how to, like... Eh, go away. Anyways, because uh, people have this weird obsession with using the Van Allen radiation belts as their trump card uh, for why the moon landings never happened. And when people use radiation belts as their excuse for why it never happened, all they're doing is showcasing that they know absolutely nothing about radiation and radiation belts. So... Having to explain, like, last night I had to explain this uh, multiple times in multiple posts, and people would still not understand. It's like, Europa's pretty. It, it really is. Um, for one, actually, let's check out the information on this. Uh, information. Tab. Caps lock. Uh, info, info, info. It's like, for one, a radiation, okay, when people think of radiation, they instantly think, um, it's just instantly lethal, it's going to kill you because it's radiation. But they don't understand, there are different types of radiation. Uh, the main different types are ionizing and non-ionizing. Uh, ionizing radiation is the stuff that kills you, it damages your DNA and rips apart proteins, it, it's, it, it's awful. And there's non-ionizing, it's radiation that doesn't cause damage, like... basically anything from visible light to microwave, to, uh, to radio waves, that's all non-ionizing radiation. Uh, let's close this. But then in those categories, you have particle radiation and wave radiation. Now, wave radiation is radiation that falls within the EM spectrum. So basically, anything from gamma rays to radio waves, that's all EM radiation, wave radiation. Uh, gamma rays, X-rays, and ultraviolet rays are ionizing. They cause damage. They're very bad, especially gamma rays, because they are very energetic, and they will rip you apart. Well, not, like, actually rip you apart, but they rip apart your DNA and they can destroy cells and protein structures and it's just, it's, it's, it's bad. And then you have particle radiation. Now particle radiation is basically it's any form of radiant energy consisting of particles, I suppose you could call it. Um, so examples of particle radiation are alpha particles, so alpha radiation, beta radiation, neutron radiation, and cosmic ray radiation. <sighs> These are all forms of particle radiation. Now particle radiation can be stopped well, it depends. It's all about shielding. Um, particle ra um, alpha rays, alpha particles, which is a form of ra particle radiation, uh, it can be blocked using lined paper. Literally, it's like if you have a uh, an alpha source, like americium, and you have a Geiger counter, which I have both of those, actually, so I'll probably do this in a video sometime, and you put it up to the Geiger counter, you'll get a massive reading, because alpha particles are very energetic. But if you put a piece of paper, even just like lined notebook paper, between the sources, the radiation drops off dramatically, because most of the alpha particles, although they are highly energetic, do not have the power to penetrate paper, and they actually can't even penetrate skin, which is why when people are in uh, contaminated zones, they have to shower off, because you have to wash off uh, the particles of radiation on your surface, including dust particles, and even just like the alpha particles themselves, like the atoms. Uh, ooh. Because an alpha particle, oh Jesus Christ, an alpha particle is essentially a helium nucleus. It's a helium atom without electrons. That's what an alpha particle is. Then you have beta radiation. Now beta radiation usually consists of protons, I think? Or is it a proton-neutron mix? I actually can't quite remember. All I know is that beta particles are much more... They, they're less energetic, but they have more penetrating power. But still, even they can be blocked using aluminum foil and uh, they only penetrate maybe as far as uh, the, like the, the upper muscle layer of your, of your arm or whatever part of your body you get hit with. So they don't actually, they don't have a whole lot of penetrating power. Now neutron radiation, that's where it's scary because neutrons do not inter... Uh, they have really fast, like they have, they're, they, they have really high um, penetrating power and since they're neutral they don't interact with atoms like very much at all. So neutron neutrons can actually penetrate lead, like blocks of lead, and keep on going. So with neutrons, you can't actually block them. What you have to do is um, you have to absorb them using uh, something that has a lot of hydrogen. So uh, boron is a good uh, neutron absorbent material, or um, 
water, heavy water especially, is a really good uh, neutron absorbent material. So, yeah. And then you have your wave radiation, like you have gamma rays and x-rays which can be blocked by lead or concrete. It's like, different radiations can be shielded by different things. Now then, what is a radiation belt? Um, a radiation belt around a planet is, char is charged particles that get captured by the, by, the, by the planet's magnetic field and are trapped in donut-shaped structures that orbit around the planet. Uh, not, not so much orbit, they, mostly, they, 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 they just get caught by the magnetic field lines and they spin around really, really fast. Now then, what are, the, like, what are Earth's Van Allen radiation belts? What are they composed of? Well, if you ask people who believe that they are impenetrable, they'll just say, oh, it's radiation. But they don't actually know that the radiation belts are mostly made of electrons. Uh, the outer belt is mostly just free electrons that are trapped in the magnetic field and are accelerated really fast. The inner belt is composed of mostly electrons with some protons, like free protons that are spinning around the, the magnetic fields. And there's also some uh, alpha particles, so hydrogen nuclei, trapped in between each or in, in each in each belt. Now you have to think about that for a second. That means that the majority of the radiation in the Van Allen radiation belts is just accelerated electrons and protons. Now we're going to have to look back at some really basic physics here to talk about this because although they are moving really fast, they are easily shielded. I can't stress this enough, but energetic electrons are not impossible to shield against and can be shielded with very simple materials. <sighs> Uh, the Apollo spacecraft used an aluminum skin, uh, actually it was like a sandwiched aluminum skin with uh, like a honeycomb, something in between it, and they used water too to add extra shielding. Now this was more than sufficient to block most of the radiation because the radiation they were passing through was electrons and protons. It was not gamma rays, it was not x-rays, it was not neutrons, it was not scary fallout tier radiation, it is just charged excited particles. So, um, the astronauts actually traveling through the radiation belts, they only got the radiation equivalent of a chest x-ray. Hardly enough to kill you. Now, it didn't, now, I can't say they didn't cause any damage because, uh, the astronauts returning, or the astronauts that, that, the astronauts that went to the moon and back and traversed the radiation belts, um, a higher than normal number of them, uh, did develop cataracts later on in life. Like, higher than what, 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 like what would statistically be, uh, noticeable, so there was a little bit of damage, obviously, from being in a higher radiation zone. However, they did not die because the radiation was not what you'd expect when you hear radiation. Because when people hear radiation, they immediately think, oh, it's going to be evil, melty radiation that just kills you and it's impenetrable and you can't shield against it. Because people don't understand there are different kinds of radiation that do different things and can be blocked by different materials. The radiation belts around the Earth are an issue because they are charged particles, yes. However, they pose more of a danger to electronics than they do to people. Because if you have to, like, like satellites that orbit within or near the radiation belts, they have issues because, you know, you're traveling through basically an area that has accelerated electrons. Now, this isn't all that bad, because again, it can be shielded, however, it's not you can't shield all of them, so you get these electrons bombarding the electronics, and you basically get um, it just wreaks havoc on electronics. Now, I would also like to point out that anyone who has a CRT TV, I'd like to point out that CRT TVs they use electron guns to generate to shoot highly sped up electrons at the screen at the phosphor screen to generate the picture. So what you have in your TV is a lower energy miniature version of what is you basically find in a radiation belt is a lot of really fast moving electrons that are magnetically contained and just like and accelerated so if you do not die while standing next to your tv you aren't like you okay uh, i'm trying to explain this better but i keep losing my train of thought the electrons do not penetrate the tv again they're not traveling as fast it isn't that great of an analogy but i'm just saying it's like Charged particles can be blocked. They can be shielded by a number of materials. Um, the Apollo spacecraft used aluminum, as I've said. Um, the new Orion spacecraft, they're testing some new composite materials that are lighter and more efficient. Um, but again, the radiation belts aren't that big of a concern because they can be 
relatively like, like, they can be easily um, shielded for the most part and no one spends any like long amount of time in them like uh, the Apollo missions traveling through the radiation belts they only spent maybe 11 minutes at the most in the, in the, in the radiation belts because again they're traveling very fast and the radiation belts are not perfectly spherical and they are not um, this uniform shape so they were actually thinner in some places than where they are in other places so you can pass through them faster through in some orbits like a very highly inclined here I'll put a picture of them on the, on the screen here as I, as I look at Enceladus here so you can actually traverse through them faster by going through a more elliptical uh, or not elliptical but a more inclined orbit which is what you would have needed to go to the moon so again the radiation belts not only did they not spend a lot of time in them but they are also not like they don't kill you instantly because they aren't like highly energetic radiation they're just they are just charged particles stuck in the magnetic field and they are very for the most part you can easily shield out most of them with simple materials now this has been known about since like the 20th century uh, scientists have known that you can block electrons and you can block particle radiation with different materials ranging from like a piece of paper to a block of lead it's like it's Depending on what, depending on what needs to be shielded, you can use pretty thin materials. The biggest issue with long-term spaceflight isn't the radiation belts; it's cosmic radiation because cosmic radiation are particles that are traveling near to the speed of light that have been shot out uh, by supernovas and whatnot. They are really energetic and they're harder to shield because they travel so damn fast. And even then, you can block a fair amount of them with composite materials, like PVC actually has been shown to block quite a few. Uh, different plastics can do it. It's like, there are ways around this, basically, is what I'm saying. But again, people seem to think the radiation belts, because they have the word radiation in them, are instantly evil. And uh, they don't understand that the radiation belts are only called radiation belts because they just have fast-moving particles that act as ionizing radiation, so it's like, okay, we can call them radiation belts, but they are not belts of ultra-dense gamma radiation, or they aren't belts of super thick, highly energetic uh, particles that will melt your face if you travel through them. It's like, even in an unshielded spacecraft, you would have to sit in the radiation belts, in orbit, in the radiation belts, for weeks, right? even if that, like, like days or weeks before you start um, suffering any, any real effects. Of course, your chances of cancer would be increased quite a bit, but I mean, like, before they killed you, what the hell is this? Altair 2. But, like, before they, before, they, like, the star killed you, it would, um, or the radiation killed you, it would take a very long time, because it just, it just doesn't work that way. It's, most of the radiation is blocked by, like, thin materials, like the aluminum on the spacecraft blocked, uh, like, again, like, they, perp like, they, a lot of it blocked the radiation. It isn't that hard to block r charged particles from, from a radiation belt because a radiation belt is basically just a pla it's, it's basically um, like those plasma toys, um, like the little glowy balls that had like like the little electrical frilly. I'll put a picture up. Those things. That's just ionized gas, plasma. That's basically that only moving really really fast. That's what a ra that's what a radiation belt is. It's just electrons, protons, and some helium nuclei that are trapped in the magnetic field, moving really, really fast. That does not mean that they are, you know, an impenetrable ba they're not they're not impenetrable, they're not impossible to stop. They are just what they are, which is a radiation belt of charged particles, mostly electrons. And I'm repeating myself now. Uh sorry, I haven't slept. I didn't sleep like at all last night, and I barely slept at all today. For other reasons, I just couldn't get comfortable with whatever reasons, and I'm, I was getting annoyed because people keep using that stupid argument about the radiation belts, and all their and they, and they don't even know that what they're doing is just showcasing that they don't know like anything about basic physics. And it's really just unfortunate because intelligent—I don't want to say intelligent, but people who n know even the basics of particle particle physics will not use the radiation belt argument as an argument because they know that just just how they work like how electrons work like just how the particles operate doesn't make them like you just know physically that they are not an issue well they're an issue but they're not like a massive issue and this is a really big planet i'm kind of confused oh what do i do oh 
so it's just like it's just one of those things where people will use that as a trump card and then people will like oh my god people will post videos from the last orion test where it's like scientists you know admits they cannot pass the radiation belt and you read you watch it and he's talking about the orion test and he, he just makes some comment that we just have to that, that 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 they're testing the hardware before they can you know to, um in the radiation belts and whatnot before they can send people and they're like, oh my god, you know, this proves they can't uh, traverse the magnetic, or they can't traverse the Van Allen radiation belts. And it's like, no, what he's saying is they're testing the new materials in the Orion capsule to be better, to, like, to better withstand stuff. Like, they're not, uh, it's, it's such a dumb argument, because it's like, if you know how radi- if you, if you know even, like, the, ba the most basic understandings of radiation belts, you would understand that they just alter four. Was that the planet from a uh, Forbidden Planet? Yeah, I think it was. Uh, oy vey. It's just it really it really grinds my gears because, or when people talk about actually any form of radiation, people have a really bad like idea about radiation. It's like they get all their information of radiation from movies or whatnot. They don't understand that there are different kinds of radiation. And that different kinds of radiation have different effects, or cumulative effects, or whatnot. Um, it's just, it's really, really annoying. Altair 4.1, huh. So, if like, when people talk about the uh, Fukushima radiation, it's like, oh my god, they've detected radiation hitting North America, we're all gonna die. It's like, the amount of radiation from Fukushima they've detected, like, on off North America's coast, is so incredibly small, it's just it's like it's so barely above normal background it's not even like really it's, it's not an issue at all it's like <laughs> there you get more radiation on an airplane than you do uh from swimming in the pacific ocean from fukushima that's just how it is because the majority of the of the radiation from that was um tritium uh tritium and uh laced water that was spilled out and tritium has a half-life of seven years so it breaks down pretty fast it's also a naturally occurring hydrogen isotope, so you can't get away from it. And the heavier isotopes, like the cesiums and the strontiums, they mostly sink and get dispersed into the uh, the deeper waters. It's like the ocean is very, very big. Like it doesn't matter how many thousands of gallons of water are dumped into the Pacific Ocean. What is a few thousand gallons versus the trillions of gallons of water in the Pacific Ocean? It's literally like a drop in a. It's literally like a drop of water in a swimming pool. It's not a big deal, but people are alarmist and again don't understand that radiation is not a boogeyman it is a very understandable thing let's go to capella Ugh, i shouldn't make videos when i'm tired i'm getting far too emotional here <laughs> but it's just again I, I i've said the same thing like multiple times over the past day or two and these people still think that i'm wrong or they still think that something else is wrong, and I say, oh, you're just repeating back what the U.S. government is teaching you, and it's like, I live in Canada, the U.S. government has no power over me. Uh, or it'll be like, you know, oh, you're just pa parroting back what NASA's saying, and it's like, I use sources from other space agencies, and I doubt that NASA has any power with China. In fact, NASA isn't even allowed to work with China, despite them wanting to. And it's like, China admitted, th or even uh, China has discovered evidence of the moon landing sites because their Chang-2 space um, lunar orbiter got back the highest resolution pictures from the moon lunar surface ever created and you can clearly see them in the, in, in the scans. And India's also done it, Russia's done it, Japan uh, did it. It's like the moon landings have been validated by third parties that are not connected to NASA or the US government in the slightest. The only way for the moon landing conspiracy theory to hold any water nowadays is if you count in mass mind control, a global conspiracy, and technology that doesn't exist. Because again, even during the Apollo flights, amateur astronomers were watching this shit. Like, a number of astronomers uh, reported seeing, I think it was like Apollo 12, they reported seeing the command module en route to the moon. Uh, a number of people have seen them coming back. I, I, Thousands of people watched the rockets being launched. Like, again, it's like, unless the United States had some kind of weird um, hologram technology that could beam these fake images into space, or they 
They spent billions of dollars building rockets and launched unmanned spacecraft to go to the moon and back and all this to, for whatever reason. It's like, it's, it's so stupid. It is so stupid. And now we're living in an age where commercial aerospace is a thing. And uh, there really should be a debris field around Vega because Vega is a young star. Oy vey. But it's just like, ah. And it's like the Google Lunar X Prize. It's a prize where um, they're going to pay a team $10 million if they can land something on the moon and then move it 100 meters and then bring back live images. And they're adding an additional, like I think it's like $7 million to anyone who can, any team that can land near a uh, an Apollo landing site and get a picture of it. So people are going to be doing that, of course, and, and it has to be done using commercial aerospace. You cannot use a government space agency or help from a commercial agency. So we have, by 2018 is when the earliest one's probably going to be able to launch. Um, we're going to have spacecraft or landers that are completely built by private non-government teams launched using private non-government space agencies like SpaceX, and they're going to be bringing back telemetry to private non-space or government um like space companies and like all this stuff but people are still gonna say that it's some conspiracy it's just it's gonna happen you could show these you could take these people to the moon and show them the landing sites and they would still think it's fake it's like no matter what happens in human life no matter what happens in human history no matter what event happens what like what event or a discovery or announcement, there were always people who think it was fake or a conspiracy or a hoax because that's just how humans work. Uh, especially like um, whenever a tragedy happens, like 9 11, and they believe that it was a, a conspiracy, that's just human psychology because it makes more sense because the human brain has a hard time understanding uh, pure evil and pure malice. So it doesn't make any sense for something evil to happen without, without a reason. So people will bring up um, conspiracies like, uh, oh, it was an inside job for this or that, or um, they think of that the Illuminati controls the world and they control all the evil the bad things happen, because like, it makes more sense for the human brain for there to be a reason behind malice, because psychologically it's really interesting, we can't actually we have a hard time understanding pure malice so those conspiracies I, I kind of get, because it's just psych human psychology, some people are more susceptible than others, but Again, they'll they have to, the the brain has to find has to make sense of the world by itself. But then you have people who believe the moon landing was faked, and they get really, really, uh, what the hell? Oh, I like lava on the surface. And they get really, really um, adamant about it to the point where they believe. Um, uh, there's some people who believe the Earth is flat, uh, space isn't real, the moon's a hologram, the planets are fake. They people, 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 there are people who believe this. And in that case, it goes beyond just human psychology. That's mental illness. That's a paranoid delusion disorder. And again, even with that, like I really can't uh, get mad at that because that's again, it's somebody's mental illness. That's you don't want to make fun of that, or or you can, I suppose. But it's, they really need to get help with that. Like that, that's their own problem. It's not a uh, something that you know can be fixed off by like, any anytime soon. So it's like, again, people will always believe the moon landing is faked. Uh, people will always believe uh, every every space mission is faked. There are people who believe... There are people who believe that Europe doesn't exist. Um, I'm not even kidding. They believe that it's a conspiracy to make North America think that there's other people out there for whatever reason. It's like, there will always be these people, so it just it can't be... It'll never, ever, it'll never go away. When men first walk on Mars, there'll be people who think it was faked. That's I can guarantee you that's going to happen. Um, the moon landings have been confirmed by six other countries, but there are people who still think it's faked because they believe those six other countries are in on the conspiracy because they somehow think that's how global politics work, despite the fact that's not how it works. So it's like, in the end, you can just try to use the facts, but people will ignore the facts. Like, again, me explaining how radi what radiation belts are, and how you can shield against them, and how they aren't that big of a deal. But people still think that it's that I'm wrong, and that that's not how it works, and that all radiation belts equal evil. Now, if we had Jupiter's radiation belt around Earth, then yeah, I could see a problem there, because that radiation belt is scary. But, incidentally, we don't. We have our radiation belt, which is far less powerful. 
Again, it's just electrons. It is just electrons and protons and alpha particles, all of which can be easily blocked. Uh, 25 minutes. I think I should end it here. There's an interesting moon. I think I have some information on it. And there'll be people in the comments here who are going to get mad at me to have the audacity to, you know, use facts. And then people will get mad at me for having the audacity to use facts that are probably fake because the government of the United States somehow has power in my country. I, I read every comment that's posted, but I generally try to. I, I don't... I don't like commenting on them unless it's like a question or a comment because like they're they're nice but when people are arguing or being stupid I just let them be because it's like whatever freedom of speech anyone's allowed to say whatever they want on my channel as long as it's not hate speech but sometimes it just gets so so painful like this one guy he believed that um well he believed the earth is flat he believed that uh space doesn't exist, rockets go up to 100 kilometers and they have to turn around and come back because there's nothing beyond 100 kilometers and all the pictures of the planets and the moon are all fake and it's, it's, it's so stupid so stupid I don't even know anymore <coughs> I, think I make this channel for fun and education but it also makes me really depressed for hum like the human race because there's these people who are just so scientifically illiterate that it's and when you try to like correct them or you try to give them facts they immediately jump into the hole you're a part of the problem you're just spouting the you're parroting back the false information or this and that. like you try to like, and like they always they ask for facts and sources and you give them those facts and sources and they immediately say they're wrong and they discredit them and they get mad at you so it's like it's like playing a game with someone who can control the rules it's like playing on a server, like an online server, with a host, and the host keeps changing the rules to benefit them. That's what argument with a conspiracy theorist is. It doesn't matter what you say, it doesn't matter what you do, they will always find a loophole in their own little logical fallacies in their mind that can, uh, quote-unquote, discredit your evidence. <laughs> it's like, if they even knew the very basics of radiation belts, they would know that that's not even... That's not even like, like like an argument against going to the moon because they're hardly a problem for modern space technology. Even like back then, it's like they knew about them. It's it's not that hard to block them. <sighs> I don't know. Oh god, I'm tired. I need to go to bed or something. It's only 10:23. I want to end this video, but I kind of don't. I'm kind of enjoying just like talking. Hmm. <sighs> then again, I do have a uh, few videos I need, to, I need to edit. I need to edit the second GTA 5 video. I have a. Uh, I got Ark Survival Evolved, and I've been playing that with friends, and it's really hilarious. I need to edit that video. Um, oh, I also got Planetary Annihilation finally, because a lot of people ask me to do that. I should probably put that at some point and make a video of that. Um, I have some KSP videos I need to edit and put together. Um, yeah. Got a lot to do. A lot to do. Yeah, tell you what, this episode was kind of boring, it was just me ranting, so, um, the next episode, I'll talk about something interesting. Um, I'm a part of, I'm a researcher on a program, on a, uh, what is it, like a crowdsourced research project to, you know, kind of work out the logistics of, of sending a manned mission to the moon Europa. It's called, uh, Objective Europa, you can check that out, it's pretty damn cool. I'll talk about that, um, next time, because... I actually finished up submitting, submitting my first research report to it. It was taxing, but it was a lot of fun, because I, I love doing that. So, um, yeah, I'll talk about that next, which is a lot more interesting and a lot more apt and uh, whatnot. As for this little spleel, I hope... Uh, well, I can always hope, but I guess it'll never happen. I hope conspiracy theorists actually look into the topics they're against and, you know, see for themselves, but that's never going to happen, so... Because, again, having information that's against what you believe is wrong, and <sighs> they'd probably promote book burning, because that's basically what they do, is ignore all the contrary evidence and try to bury it because it's against what they believe. Because for some reason, believing in a 
stupid conspiracy that has no validity is more important than just learning the facts at hand. I love space. I really do. It's pretty cool. Vast and infinite, but not infinite. Ever expanding, but finite. It's quiet, but it's not. It's not hostile or benign. It's merely indifferent. So is the song of the cosmos.